The biggest misconception of, about data engineering is that it's closely related to data science. Hi, and welcome to the first episode of the Ginger Tea Tech Talk. Today, we are going to talk about my takeaway on what is data engineering and how to get started to become one. And I think I should start by introducing myself so you get an understanding why you should believe me and why I talk about this topic. So I've been working as a data engineer for one year now in a real estate company. And before that, I worked as a front-end engineer in different companies. And I also built my own e-commerce and web agency where I built online shops, wholesale systems, or automation software for my lazy clients or for Amazon. Let's get started with the definition, what is data engineering? Data engineers are no data scientists. And that's the first thing you should know. The biggest misconception of, about data engineering is that it's closely related to data science. But simply put, data engineers are just specialized software engineers. And they focus on making data available for data scientists, data analysts, or front-end engineers so they can work with all this data. They mostly use Python code to get data from point A to point B. And to achieve all that, data engineers apply a workflow which is described as ETL, which stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. It's the most easiest approach. It simply means that you extract data from different sources and transform them in a common format so you can load them into the database. That's the most simple description. And the easiest way to do that is to use well-documented APIs. But not every data is coming from a well-documented API. That's why I have a quick example. So let's say you want to become the top seller of toilet paper on Amazon. Now you're interested to know what your competition is doing. And for that, you need to get all the data of products of all the competition on Amazon. And the third party who sells all this data wants you to pay 50k per month just to get all those data. But you don't have that money or don't want to invest it. Let's pretend you're poor so you don't have that money. So after struggling, finding a cheap way and finally installing your first WordPress theme, your confidence in puzzling and coding got a boost and you want to dive into the first task of a data engineer, which would be to scrape all the needed data from Amazon web pages and then transform them into a common format to insert them in a structured fashion into a database of your choice. And voila, your first ETL pipeline would be finished. That would be a very simplified and easy ETL pipeline. And after that, there comes a lot of more things, obviously, like automating the whole process, building a CI, CD pipeline, coding a scalable and deployable system for the cloud, implementing monitoring systems, and much more, but we will get later to that point. By the way, if you like this kind of format, feel free to smash the subscribe button so you won't miss the next episode of the Ginger Tea Tech Talk. So the reason why I'm creating this kind of video is because on the internet and YouTube, I didn't find good resources which explain the basics of data engineering. They all start at a point beyond being a beginner and then you get thrown with terms like big data, distributed systems and big data frameworks like Hadoop, Spark, Airflow. And I think it can be a little bit too confusing and too much for people who want to get started with data engineering from point zero. And this is the reason why I try to give you the basics of the basics to get started. So in a nutshell, I believe everyone who knows the basics of software engineering and actually knows how to code can get started to become a data engineer. And in the long run, it's just a matter of choosing the right tool to get your data. And I think the easiest way to wrap it up is to understand that data engineering has a lot of common things and a lot of intersections with software engineering itself. And from my experience, the best starting point would be to start learning Python, SQL and database systems. It means that you have to know what are relational and non-relational databases and combine that with a solid knowledge on data structures like arrays, dictionaries, list comprehensions, sets, hash tables and algorithms like binary search tree, sorting, hashing or string pattern matching aka regex and you're good to go. Oh. And knowing things about data, APIs, web protocols can help you a lot as well. But most importantly, learn how to quit Vim. <laughs> but besides all that, you need to know how to design databases and how to process data. So there are terms like data streaming or data batching. And also another term which you should know is data warehouse. But those are all um, terms which I want to cover in another video if you like. In the end, you just have to understand that ETL is just a fancy word which describes a workflow. And it's not that hard or something. The hard part comes when you have to make things efficient or you have to make it reliable. So in a nutshell, it means you have to know a lot about data storage systems and how to transform data. That's the only thing you actually need to know to get started.
I also wanted to talk about this belief that most people think you have to be very good in machine learning, math, and you have to know those big data tools like Hadoop and Spark to get started. But I think that's just a misleading belief. I think what we have to understand here is that it's true for big companies and big businesses who work with big data because those tools are considered as big data tools and are needed for situations when you work with data in the size of hundreds of terabytes per day and you need to distribute your system. So on the other side, there are startups and small companies which more likely care about building MVPs and running systems or interim versions to make things work. And they don't care about finding the most efficient and most effective solution because it would take more time and, and time is a very important asset for small companies. So the favorite approach of a startup is to build interim versions and to optimize it iter iter iteratively. Okay, this word, I mean this word. <laughs> Later on, if a startup or small business grows to such a big company that they need and have so much data to handle, they will care about those big data tools and then get those appropriate engineers to make them suffer more. <laughs> Imagine Google would use just a simple Python script to get all the data from you. I, I don't think that's the case. I think it's more like a super complex system, which I think I would like to research. So don't get discouraged when you see and read those job descriptions about data engineers. So here's my recap. Start with the basics of software engineering. Start with data structures, algorithms, and then Python, SQL, data APIs, and most importantly, databases. And after that, at some point, you will dive into distributed systems and cloud engineering. And then you will touch the sky in big data tools. Airflow, Spark, Hadoop, which simply are frameworks that allow distributed processing of large data sets. But that's what I'm going to cover in another video. So if you like this kind of video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so you won't miss the next episode of the Ginger Tea Tech Talk where I will cover topics like the responsibilities of being a data engineer, how to build a good portfolio of data projects and how to land your first job as a data engineer. Peace.